my hope for this uh, this gathering today around actions of faith and justice is to have a real conversation, a deeper conversation on our history uh, so that we can also understand our present. Um, one of the things about events like this, they have the possibility of uncovering what lies under the subconscious of our community to bring it up to the surface so we can look at it and address it to bring about greater healing in our community along justice lines, um, along reconciliation, fairness, equity. And so that's why uh, I'm gonna participate in this. I know that there are many different groups that were participating in this, having conversations. Uh, there are activists. Uh, there are groups that have been engaging and investigating uh, the various social inequities along racial lines in our community. And so it seems like all of them have entered into a perfect storm of sorts, uh, where there seems to be a conspiracy of goodness uh, to see these different fo folks, uh, folks come together and to acknowledge the forces that have been here for a long time. here today to remember the murder of three African-American men, Nish Gillespie, John Gillespie, and Jack Billingham, who were lynched in Salisbury, North Carolina on August 6, 1906. Why do we bring up this ugly story of those lynchings that occurred 111 years ago? Why go over such that it's so painful that some might think it best for cotton? kept in the past. We do so because, as William Faulkner reminded us, the past is not dead and gone. It's not even past. It is our contention that the South has yet to deal with its tragic past, and that is why it seems, at times, to be doomed to repeat it. It is because we have forgotten our past and swept it under the rug, never mourned, never fully repented of, that leaves us fated to continue repeating this past, this vicious cycle of violence. We gather here certainly not because of Salisbury is a bad place. Salisbury is a good place of character. But we gather here not to single out Salisbury, but to remember that lynchings occurred across North Carolina, all over North Carolina. 102 have been fully documented, but surely there are others that are now lost to memory, to history. We remember this lynching as an act of terror that was quite common across the South. We remember to learn from our past, to mourn this violence, to repent of racism, especially the kind that masquerades as justice. We are appreciative of the for Dr. Clegg and his work, who is with us today, and Dr. Seth Koch of the UNC Chapel Hill Project, The Red Record, a research program on the lynchings across North Carolina. Well, I first of all want to applaud the people of Salisbury and Rowan County for thinking about the past, uh, especially a somewhat painful uh, past, and for not wanting it to simply uh, reside there under the dust of history, but actually to think of the past as a usable thing. Uh, it's something that they and their children and others might benefit from studying and knowing about. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to uh, again recognize the importance of uh, people living today not abandoning, abandoning who we were uh, as a community some time ago uh, and uh, assuming that the past has nothing to do with us and we simply live outside of history which we 
certainly do not. Everything has a history and everything is impacted by that. I think the biggest possibility that might come out of this event is that it's an incremental step forward. It's not going to solve long-standing issues of various sorts that a community faces. No singular event on a Sunday afternoon is going to do that. But it can be the beginning of a dialogue, a, a beginning of an engagement of people with some broader issues uh, that affect the community that perhaps have uh, long-standing roots in the past um, and probably do. Uh, but um, engaging those issues in an honest way, uh, a way in which people are not starting with finger pointing and looking for heroes and villains. History teaches us that it's much more complicated than that. Uh, we tend to like simple stories as a people, as human beings, of the clear-cut beginning, middle, and ending. And we tend to like uh, stories with a clear-cut hero that we can identify with or a villain that we can identify with vanquishing. But history is not generally that simple. It's much more complex. People's motives are more com much more complex from time to time or from period to period. Uh, the same sorts of historical environments and climates that exist in one time period don't exist or d exist differently in the other, another time period. So um, the, I think the best hope uh, coming going forward after this the particular event is for some windows to open some doors to open uh, for people to talk with each other without any sort of accusatory or self-righteous um, uh, air about them. Uh, talk to each other uh, in civil uh, but honest ways about what the community is now. Uh, how to improve a community. I, I think that this exercise is one of community improvement. Uh, not community perfection, not community condemnation, but community improvement, an honest reckoning with the past, and then a movement, incremental movement forward, benefiting from the knowledge of what had happened previously.